Welcome to another Photoshop video. This time we will be editing a white life shot and on this photo I'd like to apply some stronger color tones and of course get rid of this annoying fence. Before we can clean up this image of course we need to do the basic raw adjustments and by the way if you want to follow along feel free to download this raw file in the description of the video. Now for the profile I'd like to change it to Adobe Landscape which will already boost the saturation a tiny bit. Then I'm heading into the basic tab. Here I do want to adjust the white balance. Right now you can see the whole image is a little cold. I think that's okay. I just want to introduce some more warmth by bringing up the temperature. And thus the fur will also get a little warmer, making it look a bit more natural. So that's looking pretty good. I'm not touching the tint. I think that's fine for the moment. However, I do want to adjust the exposure of this shot. Looking at the histogram, it's on the brighter side. I think that's okay. Still, I want to bring down the highlights, revealing some more details, especially in the fur. So let's bring it down a bit. All right. To add some contrast, I'm bringing down the shadows. Okay. And overall, I'd like to have a softer look. So I'm going to push the blacks just a little bit like that. Of course we want this to be sharp and clear so adding texture will help with that. And I'm also adding a little bit of clarity just like that. Nice. Looking pretty good for now but I do want to bring up the vibrance. I want to have some strong orange tones in here so this will help. Could maybe even boost the saturation a tiny bit like that. Okay. Let's compare to before. You can see we have much more contrast and much more colors. And it does look sharper as well, so that's pretty good. For this image, there aren't really any local adjustments, at least for now. Maybe I will add some later after I have removed the fence. But for now, let's continue doing a bit of color grading. And I'm heading into the color mixer first. Here I do want to adjust the hue, especially of the yellow tones which I'm going to drop and watch closely what happens to the eyes of the animal. We will get a more intense orange tone in them. I guess this is a little unnatural, but this orange color works great with the blue purplish color tone of the background. So that's exactly what I want. At the same time, I can bring up the red hue just a little bit, making the fur even more orange, just like that. Sweet. Then in the saturation panel, I am going to boost the orange saturation. Just like that. I also want to boost the yellow saturation a bit. And let's bring up the blue saturation as well. That's looking pretty solid. Let's check out the luminance tab. In here I do want to bring up the orange luminance, which again will make the eyes and the fur a little brighter and thus will make the animal pop out a little more. So that's looking good. Let's compare to before again. And you can see we have made those colors much, much more intense and harmonic. Nice. Actually, I think I need to adjust the hue a little more. In this case, you can see there's a little purple color cast in the background, which is kind of distracting. So I'm going to drop the purple hue that will result in a nice bluish background. Perfect. Then there's a bit of split toning going on in the color grading panel. Here I just want to work on the midtones, giving them a blue color tone somewhere in this range. And let's add some saturation here. Perfect. Finally, in the calibration tab, I'm going to drop the blue primary hue, which again will make those warmer tones a little more intense. Just don't need to overdo it here, but this is looking good. And let's bring up the saturation. Perfect. Finally, we can sharpen this image in the details tab. I'm going to drop the radius, increase the details, apply some masking so only the subject will get sharpened here, just like that. And then let's introduce some more sharpening. Perfect. So that's it for the raw adjustments. Now comes the boring part. We want to get rid of this fence and that will be done in Photoshop. So let's open it up there. 
So you can see I have a smart object right here. I'm going to duplicate this layer by hitting Ctrl J and I'm going to rasterize it. Otherwise I can't remove that fence. I'm doing this just in case I mess something up. So we have a backup right there on our rasterize layer. I'm now using the spot healing brush to remove the fence. So let's zoom in and we want the spot healing brush to be a little bigger than the fence itself. So just like this and make sure the hardness is set to 100% as well. Of course there are many ways to remove this fence. I just prefer the spot healing brush because it's very easy to use and the results are very very good. In the spot healing brush menu you can see I have selected the content aware fill type which works good in most cases and what I'm doing now is I'm clicking once at the beginning of this fence right here then I'm holding down the shift key and click on the end of the fence right here. This will create a straight line and you can see this way we can easily remove this fence. So let's do that again up there. Click one time on the beginning, hold down the shift key and click one time on the end. And this way we can work our way through the image. This will take a while, but it's very well worth it. So in some areas you might see something like this, which of course looks unnatural, but that's also easily fixable using the clone stem tool. So with the clone stem tool selected, I'm just copying an area from close by by holding down the alt key and clicking in here. Then I'm hovering over the area which I want to fix and just brush in here. And you can see this way I can work my way through the image making it look very, very natural. I'm first working on the surroundings of this animal because that's the easy part. Okay, then let's start over the fur. It should work pretty good as well. As you can see. And just working my way through the image step by step. Alright, now we're at the most difficult part, which really isn't that difficult, the eyes. Let me use the spot healing brush just like that, so we're not changing the eyes itself. And let's repeat this on the other side. Okay, then I do want to grab the clone stem tool again and zoom in very, very closely. Then I'm just again copying an area by holding down the alt key and clicking in here close by to the object I want to remove of course. And then I'm just trying to connect those borders of the eye while removing the fence. So that's working really good. It just takes time getting used to this method. Alright, first eye is looking good. Let's do the same on the second one. Actually, let me give the content aware fill a try by using the lasso tool just to have tried it out. Maybe it works. So I'm making a rough selection around that fence and then I'm hitting Shift F5, select content aware and hit OK. Uh, that was OK, I guess. There are still a few strange looking areas right here where I'm going to use the clone stem tool again, of course. So just like that. And the inner eye is missing completely, but I'm just copying it from the other eye like that. So I just need the backup layer to see where the eye exactly needs to go. So that is looking pretty good. Okay, nice. And this way we just removed the fence. Now taking another look at this Instagram, we can see the very deep legs are kind of missing here. I want to try and fix that using an adjustment layer from down here. Let's try the levels one. And here I'm picking the point for the blacks on the left side and just drag it to the right. Just giving the whole image some more contrast. I think that's much, much better. And at this point, I'm pretty much done with the editing. 
So I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.